Okay, everyone. So let's talk about um, polarization in this lecture. So we're talking about the polarization. Um, in particular, we're talking about polarization for um, light, photons. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about in this lecture. Uh, first of all, uh, let's make one thing clear. Um, we know that uh, waves can exist in transverse or longitudinal mode. For light, we must remember one thing, light in vacuum exists in only um, transverse mode But um, longitudinal mode doesn't exist. So that's light in vacuum. It turns out this is valid for um, um, light in many circumstances. And, um, and so this is what um, in, in normal media. also true this is also true okay so what that means is it's it's hard to um, generate light a, as a longitudinal mode but it is known to be possible it is possible to do so for instance you know on, on a metallic surface you can generate um, light which is in uh, in the longitudinal mode but in this lecture we're not going to consider that so what we're going to center our discussion on is this transverse mode. So, um, for the purpose of this lecture, light is just transverse. So let's define what 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 we mean by light being transverse. Okay, light being transverse means that if um, if light is traveling along a certain direction, so let's that let's say that that's k vector. So k vector is basically wave vector, which is the vectorial um, representation of the wave number that you uh, are already familiar with. So wave number uh, plus direction is what we call wave vector. So that uh, is a vector which is um, um, which is the um, in this direction in this in this figure. And now transverse means that. means that the electric field of the wave is basically um, perpendicular to the k-vector. So let's say this uh, k-vector <coughs> is, for example, z-direction or y-direction. Let, let's say this is the y-direction. If this is the y-direction, then um, you know electric field can exist only in the x-z plane. It cannot be along the y-direction. So that's what it means transverse of polarization of light. If the electric field can exist along the uh, direction of the wave propagation, then that's what's called longitudinal polarization, which we will not consider, as I said earlier. Okay, so um, now that we have the definition of the transverse light, let's uh, go ahead and um, discuss something very uh, elementary which will help our discussion on the polarization of light. Okay, so what we will consider is actually this type of uh, small um, thin rod. So it's, it's kind of long, but it's very thin, and uh, it's made of metal. And uh, at the end of the rod, maybe it's, uh, it's connected to a cable which goes to your TV. And so, or, or radio, or something like that. <coughs> so the notion here is that this is your antenna. And uh, uh, the antenna is designed to generate some AC current, alternating current, and that alternating current will be captured by this wire, and you, you, you will be able to enjoy a TV program or radio program and some such thing. So now, um, 
let's take uh, let's define some coordinate system because that's what uh, is usually very very useful so let's consider this vertical axis along the uh, antenna as the z-axis except that is my, my mind is crooked or something and it's not easy to draw a vertical line okay let me let's just say that that's good enough okay so that's the z-axis and then uh, let's define this as our y-axis and um, and then uh, let's say the x-axis is actually coming towards us in this uh, diagram okay so there's the xyz coordinate system let's consider as we did here uh, the light is traveling uh, along the y direction so it's uh, it's pointing towards negative y direction and so it's going uh, it's coming in this direction so in, in this case um, you can see that E, uh, E field is now in the XC direction, XC plane, right? Because of the transverse nature of this light, E field is, is, is in the XC plane. And now, um, for the purpose of this discussion, it's convenient to focus our attention to the YZ plane. Why? Well, the electric field could be uh, pointing to uh, along the x direction, but uh, notice uh, that x direction is actually perpendicular to this uh, antenna. And uh, because the antenna is very thin, it's actually uh, uh, basically impossible to uh, generate any current um, uh, perpendicular to the wire along the x direction or the y direction. And so it's um, um, we, we will not consider electric field in the x, x direction. So what we'll consider is that uh, we will consider this yz plane, and um, in this diagram, um, photon or light is coming towards this direction, and then we will consider the electric field being in the z direction like this. So then, what will happen <coughs> when this light hits the antenna? then uh, this electric field will um, hit hit the antenna. What is the electric field? Electric field means that when there is a charged object with charge Q, then Q times E becomes force. Okay, so that's charge. Charge is something like, um, for example, negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb for electron. You don't need to know this. It's just um, um, you, you you just have to note that Q is the charge of an object uh, that's hit by the light, and if, if uh, and force is given by Q times E. That's the definition of an electric field. So then, when this electric field hits the antenna here, what will happen is that uh, this metallic object has free electrons. And these free electrons will, uh, will be accelerated according to this force and they will just go up and down, up and down, because this is, a, a, this is the light where electric field is going up and down um, in a sinusoidal fashion. And so that's AC current right there. When, when an electron, when, when free electrons are oscillating up and down, that's uh, the alternating current, and that alternating current will go through this wire, and uh, and that will uh, generate a certain signal. Okay, so uh, you you can see that this situation where the k vector is along the y direction is a is a very efficient uh, situation where you will get a huge signal from your antenna. So now let's let's consider another situation here when photon is not coming in that y direction, but let's say the photon is coming along the z direction, uh, negative z direction, to be sure. So let's say that uh, that's k. In this case, what is the possible uh, directions, what, what are the possible directions of the electric field? In this case, electric field is in the xy plane. As I, um, as I, as I explained earlier, we will not consider uh, x direction, but it, now, if we consider the electric field along the y direction, we, we again find that, oh, that electric field is perpendicular to this antenna. So that electric field, electric field is, is not going to be able to shake the electrons here to generate AC current. So what, what does that mean? 
that means in this case when the light is coming uh, in this direction the light will not be absorbed so there's there's not going to be any signal that uh, that goes through the wire so no signal okay so now let's consider another example which is kind of in between so let's say that um, elect, uh, the, the light is coming at 45 degrees okay so let's say that this is 45 degrees still in this um, YZ plane and then um, the electric field now is um, in this direction right so now electric field is 45 degrees with respect to this uh, antenna direction so will this electric field uh, be able to uh, oscillate electrons um, in this in this antenna and the answer is yes and um, how, how is it going to how, how efficient will it be? Well, you can do a trigonometry there, so you can <coughs> you can say that um, you know the electric field is um, you know the the electric field that's um, that's uh, parallel to this uh, antenna is going to be you know cosine forty five degrees of that, and um, um, you can um, you can calculate. Um, the, the the power transmitted to this and it and it, it actually is proportional to cosine of 45 degree squared um, and so that's in this case um, the power transmitted to um, the power absorbed by this antenna would be half power half signal so this is full signal case So now you get the picture here. So what happens is that uh, when the when the light is uh, coming along the y direction, you get you get the maximum signal, and when the light is coming in the z direction, you get no signal. But in between, you get reduced signal. So it goes from here to there, in a cosine square theta type of um, a manner. So that's that's what that's basic uh, physics of a simple simple antenna here. And I have to note that when I say this antenna is very thin. What I mean by that is that this antenna is very thin compared to the wavelength of the light that is supposed to be captured by this antenna. So the, all, the la all the length scale is in reference to um, the wavelength of light. And typically this, uh, the, this type of antenna has the length scale, you know, the, the long direction here has the dimension of half lambda or something like that. Okay. So on the previous slide, we talked about the basic physics of uh, receiving light using a simple antenna. Now we're going to discuss something related to that. Uh, what we're going to discuss is actually a time-reversed process of what we discussed in the previous slide. So instead of discussing um, capturing light with an antenna, we're going to discuss emitting light with an antenna. And um, so let me talk about, let me say a few words about the time reversal symmetry that we're going to discuss, we're going to use here. Um, the time reversal symmetry means that when a physical process is possible, when you play it backwards, it, it is also a possible physical process. And uh, this principle is valid for many physical laws, including the electromagnetic laws that are relevant here. But some of you may uh, point out knowledgeably that, um, for example, this um, conductor has a finite resistance. And so when, when an AC current is induced, uh, there will, there's going to be joule heat uh, emitted. And uh, if the heat is involved, then the time reversal symmetry will be broken. And that's quite true. So what we're going to assume here is that uh, this uh, conductor is a very good conductor. So the joule heating can be ignored, and, and so then we can uh, consider the time reverse process of what we discussed on the previous slide, and we're going to get a brief description of radiation. Okay, so now you flow the AC current on this antenna, and then light will come out, 
and when the light comes out along the y direction it's going to have let, let's say it has some intensity i0 okay and when light when, when light comes out in this direction which way is 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 the electric field going to point uh, it's going to point along this direction or the negative of that so electric field will oscillate along the z direction so now we ask the question is is there any light coming out along the z direction in, in, and the answer is no there's no light there's no light coming along that direction why well on the previous slide we we, we, we demonstrated that no light going in that direction is is uh, is absorbed by this antenna so if you reverse that there's no light coming um, uh, um, in this direction now we ask another question uh, how about like at an angle like 45 degrees 45 degrees is there some light coming out in that direction the answer is yes and in this case how, how is the um, What's the direction of the E field? Well, E field is always perpendicular to the K direction, as we said here. So that means E field is uh, uh, 45 degrees <coughs> um, with respect to this uh, direction of the antenna. And how much intensity are we going to get along that direction? And the answer is, well, it's going to be half of I0. So there, there it is. That pretty much uh, tells us almost everything that we want to know about the uh, radiation pattern from this simple um, um, device. So, to summarize, if we just um, um, if we um, define that angle as theta, so then the intensity of light that we get is I zero cosine square theta. And, uh, and, and the polarization of photon is, uh, is uh, strictly along the direction of the antenna when we observe light in the xy plane. And as we approach the um, z, uh, um, z axis from the xy plane, either upwards or downwards, um, the, the polarization will rotate. And as it, does, as it rotates, um, the intensity of the light that we're going to be observing is going to be uh, reduced by this cosine square uh, theta factor. So um, you can see that the strongest light that you observe here will have the polarization, which is um, I, which which is points along the same direction as the direction um, along which electrons are, are shaken in this uh, antenna. And so that's the simple that's a simple theory of um, light radiation by um, by this simple antenna.